Hello there friends and welcome! For today's Pathfinder guide I want to start on a new type of build, ratio archetypes that the game has, so classes that only a single race can select. For my first one I have chosen a Wildland Shaman, which is only accessible by Orcs. Let me tell you, this build is extremely stacked and what I now consider to be the best of the Shaman archetypes by far. You can combine all of the powerful utility hexes the game has to offer, like Fortune and Protective Luck, to easily shift the dice rolls into your favor, a full Shaman spellbook with up to even level 10 spells because we are merging with Angel, to access all of the extremely overpowered Angel Mythic spells for even more buffs, and even damage if you prefer, great attack bonus with many attacks per round, extreme damage, you can definitely deal more than 500 damage on a critical hit, all holy, so irresistible, which does let you deal full damage even to pesky swarms. And as for a normal hit, close to 150 damage too. And of course, very high critical range and even critical damage too from our special Great Axe, quite fitting for an orc character. Besides that, you also have very high saving throws and the best of it all, a super overpowered animal companion as early as level 1 that can easily tank for you with more than 97 permanent armor class that becomes even higher than 100 through some of our powerful always in effect angel debuffs and by virtue of being a shaman with the protective luck hacks you can even force all enemies to roll twice when attempting to hit your wolf. Except of course our wolf will also have extreme attack bonus, high damage, a great number of attacks per round, crowd control as knockdown on every single hit, to put it simply everything you could always want as a side feature of your class. Like I said this build is super stacked so without further ado let us get started on our orc shaman angel guide. Well, it stands to reason we are going with Shaman and Wildland Shaman. Like I said before, I do think this is the strongest of the Shaman archetypes that we have now. You are limited to only the Battle Spirit, but you know if you've ever used Camellia, then you know this is one of the strongest Shaman Spirits anyway, so it's more of a benefit than anything. With access to powerful hexes such as Battle Master, Hampering Hex, and a very solid spell list. The main appeal of the archetype, however, is of course the free, full-scaling Animal Companion as early as level 1. And the knockdown effect you'll get from our wolf will highly help our character during the early game when it comes to increasing our attack bonus before we are ready for the angel merge at around level 10. Shadow Shaman can also be very viable since you get sneak attack progression for free. The thing is, you know, elemental barrage doesn't work for melee attacks anymore and honestly, I'd much rather have the pet. And for once, of course, we're not going human, we are limited to the half-orc race now. Thankfully, half-orcs have the orc weapon familiarity, ratio ability, which grants them proficiency with great access and falchions for free. Quite amazing for our build since, well, these are some of the best weapon choices in the game. Orc ferocity, on the other hand, is more trouble than it is worth because, honestly, your character will probably end up dying with this. Thankfully, we're kinda ignoring it soon enough. For your hasteal heritage, as I said, you most likely want the tribal, right? Because you don't want orc ferocity, it's too dangerous. This way you lose that and still retain the powerful weapon familiarity for great axes and falchions and even keen senses too. And the plus two ratio to lore nature checks can be helpful too. Now for background, the usual street urchin and pickpocket. Despite shamans only having somewhat bad simple weapon proficiency, because we are an orc, we can overcome that. For your ability scores, we are going Angel for the merge, but I want this to be a more melee focused build. Look, you can actually go with other mythics, the problem is, nothing gameplay wise will ever compare to Shaman Angel. It's as simple as that. So strength will actually be your main ability score. When it comes to wisdom, 15 is more than enough, you just want enough to cast all the level 9 spells, later level 10 even. The reason I don't start with 14 is that 15 is safer, right? Because merged shamans learn spells very fast, even faster than an angel oracle, the same speed as an angel cleric, which means even at chapter 3 you already have level 9 spells, which would require 19 wisdom. At that point you have headbands of plus 4 wisdom to easily overcome this. Besides that, I recommend you dump charisma, we are an orc. Not exactly a race known for their charisma. And then go for 14 constitution, enough for our hit points, especially as angels are pretty much unkillable. And 12 dexterity is more than enough for some boost to our attacks of opportunity. And since we will specialize in high critical range weapons, either falchion or great axe, you will get tons of criticals with this build for many free attacks through the outflank feat. For skill points, I recommend lore nature, since we do have a bonus from our race, but you can also go with lore religion if you prefer. And besides that, knowledge world, so we can cook for our party 
as she remains useful even during camping and resting. But you can also go with athletics since you'll have very high strength. So either athletics or lore nature and then knowledge world for cooking. As far as our level 1 feat, we only get a single one. Shamans don't really have any bonus feats. In the spirit of something unique that only half orcs can get, let us go with the Razor Tusk Ratio feat. It basically grants you an extra bite attack per round, which is, you know, always welcome. After all, it means we now have two attacks, even just at level 1, without having to rely on the cleave feat. While this attack can come with a penalty to attack bonus, it doesn't matter that much, first because we are soon getting a pet that automatically trips the enemy for us, which means plus 4 through our attack bonus. Second, there's also the flanking bonuses for plus 2, with just that we already overcome the penalty, even at level 1. And as far as our animal companion, as usual, the dog and the wolf are the best. You can also go with the gore pets though, like boar, the triceratops. I'll personally pick the wolf, as I think it fits a wildland shaman a lot more than a dog, for a more beast-like animal companion. When it comes to deity, you kinda have to be good aligned. I know orcs aren't exactly known for their good alignment, but we are a half-orc, and just like Irabeth, the Paladin, let's just say our half-orc eventually found redemption through the angel mythic path. So pick any deity that lets you be either neutral good or lawful good. You can't really go chaotic good with angel. I think Erastio is a nice choice, he is a god of the hunt. And then this is very important, pick either neutral good or lawful good. The main reason is the super powerful eagle soul spell can only be cast by good aligned characters. Without an annoying debuff anyways. So while you could potentially go lawful neutral as an angel, it wouldn't be the same. At level 2 you get your first hex, and for this character in particular, especially if you are on unfair, I highly recommend you go with protective luck. Remember that I already have a full hexes guide that you can check here, to the side or in the video description, but anyways. While you could potentially go with Evil Eye, I think Evil Eye is something better left for a character that doesn't have as much melee potential as we will do even at the early levels like Amber or Camellia. Because Evil Eye costs a standard action to cast, which means you can't attack on the same round as you use it. Protective luck on the other hand, you can pre-buff your party with this. Even at the early levels with just one round, you can still pre-buff at least your tank before charging at the enemy. And when it comes to slumber, we won't really have high DC for this, as we aren't focusing on wisdom. Plus, as a shaman, we have somewhat slower hex acquisition at the beginning of the game, so I'd rather pick the ones that really count. For our level 3 feat, Combat Reflexes. This build will only pick the ever ready mythic ability somewhat late, so this is pretty important to grant us additional attacks of opportunity, even with low dexterity, because you know, dexterity is pretty easy to buff. Also remember that, because we have a pet that can trip and knock down the enemy as early as level 1, whenever the enemies attempt to get up, assuming they don't die before, they will proc an attack of opportunity from all of the nearby party members. Thankfully, shamans, just like clerics, are prepared casters who gain all of their spells just by level up, so I won't have to bother with a spell section. At level 4, increase strength, which is also what you're going to be increasing on all the other levels, for a truly powerful melee angel shaman character. For our level 4 hex, I'd personally go with Chant, this way we can just extend protective luck forever. I mean, you don't have to, but it can help a lot. Even if you don't care for this, protective luck is still something very useful, at the very least for tough encounters or boss battles, and we can use it to pre-buff. You could already pick Fortune here, but Fortune only lasts a single round until level 8, and unlike protective luck, which is spammable, Fortune is once per day per character. Now, if you wanted a more debuff-focused Shaman, you can certainly start with, let's say, Evil Eye, and then, at level 4, pick Hampering Hex. Shamans can actually debuff the enemy even further than Witches. For a level 5 feat, pick Power Attack. You don't necessarily have to use it so early in the game, as you might not have enough attack bonuses to compensate the penalty, at least on Unfair. But remember, we have a pet that knocks down on every attack, and knockdown enemies have minus 4 to their armor class against melee. Plus, you'll soon be getting out flank, which adds plus 4 when flanking. For our level 7 feat, as always, for any character that will be meleeing, even some spellcasters, out flank without a doubt. This is especially useful for us since we have either Falchions or Great Axes, both of which will have very high critical range, especially after you get the Grave Singer Great Axe. And the more critical hits your character gets, the more free attacks you're adding to your party throughout flank. For our level 8 hacks, Fortune at last. Not only because we can extend it forever through chant, but even if you don't like using this, at this level fortune already lasts 2 rounds, which is enough to pre-buff before bosses or tough encounters. Shamans at this level also get the enemy's bane ability, which is pretty powerful, and it does stack with bane, for example from the Crusader's Edge spell, which a cleric or oracle should be casting on your shaman, 
for an extra 46 damage against demons. Our level 9 feat is pretty important, you absolutely want skill focus and then world since I picked it, because you will enter the lore master prestige class to steal some pretty powerful stuff. While we only enter it at level 12, our level 11 feat is already set in stone, so we have to pick it at level 9. Your level 10 hex is also important, so we need a meta magic feat to enter lore master, which is why you should pick secret and then extend spell. Extend will offer you not only more versatility when it comes to certain powerful angel buffs that you really want to cast on everyone, like Sunmarked, for more spell uses, but most importantly, it's also going to help you extend some powerful late game angel spells into 24 hours duration. You might ask why delay battle master? The truth is battle master isn't that powerful. Weapon specialization at level 8 means kinda nothing, it's just plus 2 to damage. As a merged angel at level 10 we get way higher than that, just from the sun marked buff alone. For our level 11 feat the choices are given, improve at critical and I will have two choices. You can either go with falchion or great access. Ideally, you would go with Great Axis because you know the Grave Singer Axe is super OP, it is by far the best critical weapon in the entire game. At level 12 is when we'll pick our first Lore Master level. You'll get a remaining skill point here from the Lore Master, which can go anywhere, like use Magic Device, it won't really matter. The beauty about Lore Master is that it will continue our full Shaman spellcasting progression. At this point, we kinda already have the best hexes that we can extend forever through Chant. Most importantly, through our first Lore Master secret, we will be able to steal a very powerful feat. What you want now is combat feet and then shatter defenses. This lets you attack the enemies with their flat-footed armor class instead of normal armor class and flat-footed AC is always much lower, especially on unfair and hard. So long as the enemy is shaken, which you know is very easy to do because at this exact level, level 12, our merged angel shaman will already have access to level 8 spells, including the super powerful frightful aspect spell from the battle hex which grants us an aura that automatically shakens enemies for free with very high duration, 24 hours even eventually. This is a build that gets shattered defenses super early because of this. Through Lore Master we can also bypass the requirements of Weapon of Focus and Dazzling Display, both of which are kinda useless for us. Also don't forget that as a Shaman you can cast Legendary Proportions on your pet, then Frightful Aspect on your cell and you'll still retain the ability to ride your pet for maximum buffs all around. Now we want to continue Lore Master progression until around level 3, for yet another powerful secret. For our level 13 feat, you kinda have to pick Boon Companion here. Since we are moving away from Shaman, our path will stop scaling. With Boon Companion though, he'll scale fully to our levels just fine. At level 14, for your second Lore Master feat, this is also pretty important, what you want to do is steal a Cleric spell. In this case, the Eagle Soul spell, one of the best buffs in the whole game, that only works on good aligned characters capable of granting you plus 4 sacred to strength. And as an angel, you can actually extend this to 24 hours duration. Now you have two ways of progressing your build, so you can actually keep Lore Master progression until around level 5, so you can acquire another secret, which ideally would be to steal a feat from Rogue, in this case Opportunist, for a free attack per round. However, by ending at Lore Master 5 and the rest Shaman, your pet will also end up at level 19 instead of level 20, since Boom Companion only works up to 4 levels. On the other hand, if you go with full Shaman and just get 4 into Lore Master here, you'll still retain a full scaling pet at level 20 instead of level 19, and also earlier access to the Battle Master Hex. Because you know, as an angel, we already have more attacks than we can account for, thanks to the Speed of Light Mythic Angel ability, also the numerous free attacks of opportunity we are getting from outflank and a high critical range weapon, I'd much rather go with Shaman. For our level 15 feat, improve at initiative. At this point you're already at chapter 4, close to chapter 5, and the enemies start getting way higher initiative. I suppose you can ignore this if you don't care for it, and also pick like weapon focus and great axe. I just think improve at initiative is better overall because we have so many attack bonus buffs as an angel anyways. As for another hex, this is when I would actually pick Battle Master, so pick either Great Axe or Falchion depending on the weapon you chose. For our level 17 feat, you actually have many choices. I would personally pick Blind Fight here, because some of the strongest enemies, some Demon Lords even, starting from this point, they have consumant effects that are not bypassed by True Seeing. And as a Shaman, we don't get the Echolocation spell. But by this point, so level 17 and 19 feet wise, you already have the best feats overall, so you can go with anything you prefer. As for a level 19 feet, like I said, you truly have a lot of options depending on what you want. Because I do have a Scald, I would pick Improved Critical Bite for higher critical chance on bite attacks, but you know, it doesn't really matter that much. 
And then for another Hex, well, you can go with Ice Plant for a plus 2 stacking bonus race. It's just that armor class doesn't really matter for us because we can just ride our pet, who will have very high armor class, and our pet's AC is what will count. I personally just go with Secret and then Bolster. Bolster can be pretty fun as an angel because you can bolster both Storm of Justice and also Bolt of Justice for even higher damage, especially when combined with Meta Magic Rods. As for the greater weapon of focus as a shaman, great axe or falchion. Now for your last level, I would actually go lore master. We don't really gain anything special from it. It's just that we get an extra attack bonus with lore master at four. Right, we go from plus one to plus two. All right, so now let's get into mythic progression for our wildland shaman half orc angel. Since we are a melee character, close to the abyss is by far the best choice here for the extra gore attack. And as an angel, we can add a massive amount of extra damage to every single one of our attacks, including Gore and Bites, to Sunmarked and Sword of Heaven, without having to rely on Elemental Barrage. Then for your first mythic ability, you know as any merged caster, it's really hard not to pick Abundant Casting, especially since shamans have very powerful buffing spells overall from their spellbook, even without the angel buffs. For a second mythic ability, the usual extra mythic and improved abundant casting. Shamans don't get some powerful level 4, divine spells like Freedom of Movement, Death Ward and Crusader's Edge, but they do have other powerful ones, especially at level 5. As for mythic 3, the same, greater abundant casting. As a shaman you are a prepared spellcaster, and at this point you'll already be able to cast the super overpowered sunmarked angel buff. Don't forget to merge with shaman here. For mythic rank 4 you have two options. You can pick Improved Mythic Critical and Great Axe already here. Remember that our Great Axe will have times 4 critical multiplier with this, while still the highest critical range, 15 to 20. Or you can already get started on Enduring and Greater Enduring spells. The only difference is that you would pick Mythic Critical here, then Enduring and Greater Enduring at 5 and 6, otherwise Enduring at 4, Greater Enduring at 5, and then Delay Mythic Critical for level 6. Since I kinda want a more martially inclined Orc Angel, and we have a super powerful Great Axe for critical damage, I'll pick Improved Mythic Critical earlier. As for your first Sword of Heaven ability, remember that as usual I already have a full angel guide you can check to the side here, so I'll keep it simpler for now. I do think you are kinda always forced into picking Everlasting Flame, because otherwise your Sword of Heaven will only last a single minute per use. With Everlasting Flame you can apply it for, you know, the entire dungeon crawl. For Mythic level 5, Enduring spells, or you would already have Greater Enduring, if you chose to delay Mythic Critical for later. Then pick Piercing Rays here, this can help your spellcasters a lot. SO Mythic 6, Extra Mythic, and Greater Enduring Spells, so at this point you can already extend every one round level spell you have into 24 hours duration. Quite powerful for spells like Avenger's Blessing and Sun Marked. For your Improved Sword of Heaven ability you have two choices. Abolish Gaio is the one I usually tend to pick, because this gives you an extra 50% damage against Gaio demons. Some of the strongest of demons are Gaio, and this even works for melee attacks, right? So your great axe or falchion hits. On the other hand, for something different, you can also pick Guide the Faithful instead, which applies a very nasty minus 4 penalty to the armor class of enemies you hit. I think because we already have super high damage from Sunmarked and other angel buffs, this can be pretty fun for a change. A minus 4 penalty to the enemy's AC, which also works for ranged attacks by the way, is pretty much sealing their fate, especially when you consider your pet's knockdown attacks on hit for another minus 4. But like I said, you can also pick Abolish Gaio instead. For Mythic level 7, Ever Ready. We do gain this somewhat late, but you know, all of our other Mythic feats and abilities are very important. The good thing is at this point you already have full critical hit potential, so your attacks of opportunity will basically cleave the enemy apart. Then go with Solar Winds. For Mythic level 8, I would pick Mythic Power Attack. Nothing will really give as high a damage boost as this, especially for a Great Axe or Falchion, but you can also go with Mythic Improved Initiative, or even Mythic Weapon Specialization. I do think Mythic Power Attack is the best choice though. Then, definitely Speed of Light, because this grants you 2 attacks per round, even an extra attack over haste. Plus it also lets you quicken level 7 and lower spells for free, I'll kinda keep our half-orc portrait here, I don't think the angel lady quite fits our shaman. As for mythic level 9, you have two choices. Mythical beast is my preferred pick, but you can also go with less stand. The thing is, as an angel, shaman, especially one that has a path, you'll pretty much never die. And at this point, you can even pick the angel spell that lets you automatically revive anyways. So mythical beast is the way to go. Then either burning bright or flame of life, both kinda don't matter that much in the grand scheme. As for mythic level 10, Either Mythic Improved Initiative 
but you can also go with Mythic Weapon Specialization for a bit more damage. As for a Greater Sword of Heaven, either Overwhelming Flames, Abolish Guile, or even Abolish Poison, because some enemies like the Skari are of the Poison type. Alright, so let's discover gear for our Wildland Shaman Angel now. You know the amulet, as always, Valaxia's Magnifying will be the best, especially because we truly want as high strength as possible, higher than 50, of course. And if you went with Evil Eye early on, there's also the Talisman that grants a plus one to your Hex DC. When it comes to armor, you can actually cast spells when wearing up to medium armor. Basically, for the start of the game, go with Breastplates, and later on, Mithril Breastplates. However, because armor class doesn't really matter for our character since we just take our pet's armor class when riding him, you might as well ignore actual armor and go with Haramakis. For the robes, even though we don't care for DC, the Robe of the Seven Sins is still the best choice because of the increase to caster level, which thus grants us more powerful and more long-lasting buffs earlier. For belts, earlier belts that increase both strength and constitution or strength and dexterity, and later physical perfection for nice boosts to all your physical stats. For the glove slots, I find Fences Gift to be the best, as it does increase our Great Axe or Falchion damage by plus 3. I mean, it's not that much in the long run, but it's a nice boost. But you can of course just go for Arilus Embroidered Gloves instead, for higher armor class and saving throws, and even something like the Gloves of Death Dealer for Chapter 5, when you'll find the Baphomet skill book that grants you free sneak attack. There's also now the Gloves of Phlebotomy, for a bleed effect on hit, although you won't really be having that high wisdom to increase the DC to the max. For boots, as usual, Ronak Sacrifice, for the highest increase to Dexterity, also Athletics if you went with it as a class skill, plus some other neat bonuses. Otherwise, if you have a Scald with Pounce, you can pick the Boots of Stampede too, for higher damage when charging. For the Helm slot, early on, Headbands of Wisdom, but eventually you can also replace them for the Hat of the Bitter End, which does grant you a stacking untyped plus 2 bonus to attack rolls for each enemy you kill, for 3 rounds. The main reason is that, from the latest DLC, The Treasure of the Midnight Isles, you can also find the Broken Trickster glasses pretty early, and this does grant you a plus 6 bonus to Wisdom, which is all you need as far as mental stats. Plus, the 20 damage reduction against physical attacks can also help in the very rare cases where your character will take on an attack of opportunity while riding your pet. For the Cloak slot, you can use the Special Angel Cloak, which will maximize the damage of your Storm and Bolt of Justice. Otherwise, you know, just Cloaks of Resistance with the highest modifier, usually up to plus 6. For the Rings, the Ring of Evasion can always help, as we do have somewhat high Reflex. And second, the Ring of Imminent Demise, for the plus 2 competence bonus damage to two-handed weapon attacks, and a nice debuff on attacks of opportunity, although usually you'll just be killing the enemies outright. For the Braces, you can go with Braces of Breaching, even Braces of Armor, if you ignored Breastplace and went with Aramakis, and later the Braces of Abruptum Slot to increase your sneak attack damage, after you get the book inside Baphomet's Prison, of course, for sneak attack for free. As far as weapons, you can go with either Great Axes or Falchions. I do think Great Axes are by far the best, because you know, Gravesinger is OP, and it is by far the best critical focused weapon in the entire game with high critical range and also high critical damage. You can only get it starting from chapter 3, before that you can go with other great axes or also falchions, so long as you cast enlarged person on your character for reach so you can attack from safety, or you can also go with long spears because long spears are rich weapons and we do have proficiency for them even at level 1. As far as your quick slots is the usual package, for spellcasters, a great quick and meta magic rod, mostly for storm of justice, and even if you don't care about it, quick and mass heals are very useful as well. The old grimoire can grant you a lot of nice extra slots for level 1 to 3 spells, extend meta magic rods to increase the duration of your buffs before you get greater enduring spells, and also even after that, so you can turn powerful one round level spells into 24 hours. The Grandmaster's Rod is only here if you want to truly maximize your Storm and Bolt of Justice damage. After all, you can cast at least Bolt of Justice for free as a swift action every round, while retaining all of your attacks. Lastly, just a Signet of House Vespertilio here to increase any skill of choice. I would personally go with Cooking, as weird as that sounds, just so we can truly achieve the highest cooking value to properly craft all of the best food recipes. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my first racial archetype build guide, our Wildland Shaman Angel Orc. 
If you found it useful, please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member to access some exclusive content on demand. Thank you for watching and see you next time friends with even more fun Pathfinder builds.